during our press conference on Monday, I talked about child care and talked about the concerns uh, we have to make sure that we get this right, uh, to make sure that we have as much information and data as possible to confidently reopen our child care centers. And so for the past few weeks, uh, we've been working with numerous experts, uh, pediatricians, children's hospital folks, child care professionals, parents, caregivers, infectious disease experts. Uh, these conversations have helped inform our plan, rooting it in the best science and practices that we could find. Um, I will say uh, that we do not have uh, really any great data in regard to child care uh, and COVID-19. Uh, while there is information, certainly best practices in regard to it, any spread of virus uh, in child care. S studies have been done on that, but as far as COVID-19, uh, there is not a whole lot of information out there. Uh, I'll talk about this in a moment, but we intend to uh, rectify that. On May 31st, uh, child care providers in Ohio uh, will be able to reopen. Uh, they will reopen with reduced numbers of children in each classroom intensified cleaning and hand washing practices uh, and many other changes. Along with daycares uh, are day camps. We know that uh, day camps are an important part of the child care conversation as well. Families want to plan for summer work and summer activities uh, and day camps uh, will open the same day uh, as daycare on May the 31st. Uh, the protocols and ratios for this will be released by the end of the day tomorrow. So those will be forthcoming. But I know in talking with a variety of working families and local government officials that that was an important one to give guidance on when we're opening and it's going to be May the 31st. Uh, additionally, uh, I mentioned BMVs before. I'll mention them again. Uh, BMVs will open across the state on the 26th, May the 26th. Uh, I want to talk about certain services that are already available at the BMV because we want you to use the online services that are available. We've worked very diligently to get every service we can online and we want you to use those uh, when you can. There are services for our online, for online use, for things like vehicle registration, vehicle plate replacement, scheduling a driving test, updating your address, paying license reinstatement fees, active duty and deployed military members and their dependent families can apply for driver's licenses and ID cards and request duplicate licenses online. Uh, there are a variety of things like that that are available online. So go to the online services at BMV and see if they can serve you. But all other services will be open uh, that you must go into a BMV for on May the 26th. Uh, remember also that under House Bill 197, there are extensions on licenses and registrations that are still, will still be in effect, uh, that you will not go in and need to immediately renew these things and frankly, we don't want you to, unless you have to. We know that there are certain circumstances where you may have lost a license, you need something like that to, to begin another phase of your life, a job, uh, something along those lines, and that service will be available. But don't come in unless it's necessary. Use the online service as, as you can. Remember the, the, the website is oplates.com uh, is the website that you can use to access those online services. Uh, another thing that will be opening, campgrounds. Um, many of them are already open uh, in a limited fashion throughout the state, but uh, they will be opening up completely on May the 21st. Uh, they will have to meet certain requirements. That guidance is up on the website now uh, so that campgrounds and, and campers can start making plans as we go forward. So that date is May the 21st. Uh, that information is available on what those protocols are. 
cleaning the, the commonly used areas at, at those sites. I know that uh, the Ohio Department of Natural Resources Director, Mary Mertz, will have, also has a number of things that will be happening in our state parks regarding openings and protocols uh, that will be available on the website as well. Uh, next group that we've worked with uh, have to do with gyms uh, and fitness centers, recreation centers, dance studios, tennis clubs as examples. Uh, as, and as it relates to that, we also have guidance on limited or non-contact sports leagues and pools. And let me go through uh, each of these. For gyms, fitness centers, they will be able to reopen on May the 26th. Guidance will be on the website at some point today on the protocols that you must meet. We know that uh, athletic facilities working out provides both mental and physical benefits to people, but we also know that it's important, very important, that we keep these surfaces, these places clean, that we uh, follow the protocols so that we don't uh, create any unnecessary uh, contact or spread through the reopening of these facilities. And those, that guidance will be available today. We also have guidance on sports leagues, which fit right into this, on non-contact or limited contact sports like golf, softball, baseball, tennis, paddle sports of the like. Uh, those can also reopen, uh, re be reestablished on May the 26th. Guidance on all of those things will be available later today. We are emphasizing that these are very low contact or non-contact sports. We have work groups that are working on the higher contact sports as it really relates to lacrosse, hockey, field hockey, soccer, basketball, uh, and others. Um, we know that there are some uh, other things like volleyball, gymnastics that present their own, their own special challenges. The work group still is functioning to, to provide future guidance on those types of sports, but what we're announcing today are those limited contact situations uh, that we want to make sure that there are, are guidance around. Uh, the, additionally, we know that there are other leagues, things ranging from frisbee to cornhole to bocce, things like that. Uh, there's going to be general guidance on there for those non-contact activities regarding social distancing, sanitizing equipment, and wearing face coverings, et cetera, when practical. Uh, these protocols are designed, these openings are designed to allow us to do the things we love while also, while also keeping our loved ones safe. And uh, it's important that for successful, as everything we do, for successful reopenings, follow the protocols that we know work if followed to minimize uh, our, our health risks. Additionally, with pools, uh, pools can reopen on May the 26th as well. I wanna read directly from the CDC guidance on this. There is no evidence that the virus that causes COVID-19 can be spread to people through the water in pools, hot tubs, spas, or water play areas. Proper operation and maintenance, including disinfection uh, with chlorine and bromine, uh, of these facilities shouldn't inactivate the virus in water. What we're talking about here, I wanna be clear, we're only talking about pools that are regulated by local health departments. These could be public pools or clubs. What we're not talking about are water parks and amusement parks. Those are not under this, uh, will not be allowed to open under this guidance. Those are regulated differently and those are being addressed through our travel and tourism work group. Uh, so they're not forgotten, but they're not uh, on this list for opening. We remind in these situations that individuals should continue to protect themselves, uh, practicing social distancing and good hygiene, uh, and the uh, additional, additionally ensuring water safety quality for the owners and operators in community, community pools uh, is important. That uh, you follow these guidelines that are being put in place and, and always the interim guidance for businesses and employers on safe workplace environments. Uh, that guidance on pools will be made available later today on the coronavirus website under reopening. Uh, and then finally, horse racing 
can resume on May the 22nd. Guidance for those activities have been approved by the Racing Commission. Uh, worked, uh, work, they worked through the ra Racing Commission to make sure that these activities can take place. But spectators, spectators will be prohibited. No spectators. Uh, I want to stress that this does not mean that casinos or racinos themselves can open up. We're only talking about the agricultural aspect of this with horse racing, no spectators. Uh, this I know is an important priority in the agricultural community and the Racing Commission has provided guidance that will be added to the website. Emphasizing again, these things may open on the dates described does not mean that they will open and does not mean that local governments or others might not add additional guidance on this. Um, and all of this guidance uh, will be up on our coronavirus.ohio.gov website site by the end of the day tomorrow. Much of it will be up today. All of it will be up by the end of the day.